Okay, this is number 16. Casey, this is for you. Right. We have a bird bath. I think it's number 16. Yeah. Exercise 16. We have a bird bath. Now, the bird bath has ice in it. It has ice in it. And it's solid ice. And the temperature of that ice is negative 7 degrees Celsius. So ice can be any temperature, really. It can be negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. That's absolute zero. It could be negative 20 degrees. It could be whatever the temperature is of your freezer in your refrigerator. In this case, the outside temperature is negative 7 degrees Celsius. It's ice, so that's the temperature of the ice. I have three, gram, three kilograms of ice. Okay, now, this, this problem is in three parts. Here's the graph. Okay, so I'm starting at negative seven. I'm going, it's going gonna, it's gonna to heat up to zero degrees Celsius, and it's going to start to melt. Now, as it melts, the water, the ice is going to absorb potential energy. It's not absorbing kinetic energy because the temperature's not increasing. It's all staying at zero. So this is solid, and that's liquid. This is solid liquid, okay? So it's going to absorb potential energy with no temperature increase, because remember, kinetic energy and temperature are proportional to one another. As one goes up, the other goes up. So, there's no temperature change, so you know that it's only potential energy. Well, what's the name of the energy the ice absorbs to go from a solid to a liquid? The name of the energy is heat of fusion. Heat of fusion, okay? Yes? So. So then it's going to be zero degrees Celsius, and then it's going to climb up to 25 degrees Celsius. Clear? Okay. So this is the specific heat capacity of solid water, ice. This is liquid water, just water. And this is the heat of fusion, 335,000 joules per kilogram, or simply 3.35 joules per kilogram. Okay, so it's in three parts. We want to do the heat for A, then B, then C. Okay, here it is here. Okay, A, QA, is going to be, remember, if you're looking for the heat for the change in temperature, it's mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat capacity. So A here is a solid, and it would be the mass, three kilograms. The temperature change is seven degrees Celsius. That's the temperature change. It's gonna go from negative seven to zero. There's no negative sign. And then that's the specific heat capacity of the ice given here, 2090, okay? B is gonna be this potential energy we call the heat of fusion. And that's going to be simply the mass times the heat of fusion. I left off the unit labels. And then this is going to be C is going to be the mass times the temperature change. It goes from 0 to 25. And then the specific heat capacity is here that has to be given. And so this first heat is going to be four, three, eight, nine, zero joules. That's the first heat, if you do that on your calculator. The next one is going to be just simply one times 10 to the sixth joules, or 1.005 times 10 to the sixth. I just rounded it, it's easy. And then this one is going to be three, one, four, zero, two, five. Okay? And then when you add it all up, so you're going to add this heat plus this heat plus this heat, so you're going to get your total heats 
is going to equal 1.4 times 10 to the 6 joules. And that's it. Okay, look that over uh, and email me if you have a question. And that should be pretty straightforward. Easy for me to say. Okay. Yes? I don't want to spend too much time because it'll take longer to upload. Okay? Easy? Finished.